That's what it's all about, partner. Help your neighbor and everything else. As Ronald Tomasi is loading up sandbags to keep Lafitte dry. Evacuate, no way. I'm here to stay. I'm like old Barnacle. I ain't going nowhere. But Lafitte Mayor Tim Kerner says those who decide to stay be ready for the possibility of tides as high as seven feet. I hate to say it, but I guess we'll do like always and, and, and risk our lives and whoever goes out there to, to, to save them, but we'll continue to do it. But I would uh, rather go inside the levee system and be safe. In addition to sandbags, crews are out putting additional pumps to help with drainage. A little nervous. My husband is not from here. Um, he's from Washington State and he is in panic mode. Deborah Tharp is packing up with her family and animals. We are set. This is where we'll be. They plan to head to Baton Rouge. I don't know what more we can do other than to get out of Dodge. But many here say whatever Nate brings, they'll stick together as a community before and after the storm. Oh yeah, got faith in Lafitte. Oh yeah, Lafitte's better than the Saints. We ain't gonna get beat yet. <laughs> I'm telling you. He was scoping out the place, you know. I guess criminals, dumb criminals can't see cameras. This is former Harlem Globetrotter turned fitness trainer, Elijah Hobley. This camera right here caught him. He's talking about an incident just this week where he stopped a suspected burglar from breaking into his Gentilly home. This is surveillance video of that incident. You can see the man walk up to the front door and bend down as if he's looking for something. Then through his phone app, Hobley took control. If you see the video, I'm like, hey, what's up? He takes off running. That moment caught on one of Hobley's many security cameras. So as I look back, rewind and my camera's back, I noticed he had went to my neighbor house across the street first. Then he went to my next neighbor house second. Hobley then sent the video to his neighbors. He had like 40 people responding to me after I sent that whole video out to him. Oh, Elijah, this, this guy broke into my house. One neighbor even sent him a picture of a guy who tried to break into their house. They think it's the same man. The incident left Hobley's family a little unnerved. This spooky. Everybody was nervous last night. But they think Hobley's a hero because of his quick thinking and security app. That's why I have Ring. I have all these cameras around just to protect my family and myself. One year later, we've experienced a tremendous amount of pain, all of us. With heavy hearts and in black and blue, dozens come out to remember officers Montrell Jackson, Matthew Gerald, and Deputy Brad Garofola. Well, after a year's time, you know, time heals all wounds, but uh, this is a large wound to heal. Well, it's got fire, officer down, it's got fire, officer down. July 17, 2016. Gavin Long ambushes officers. He had traveled to Baton Rouge from Missouri in wake of the Alton Sterling shooting. Investigators say Long's goal was to kill police. They're all special young men. They're heroes. That's what we call them, our heroes. Deputy Brad Garofola's mother says his children called him Superman. And I'm extremely proud of him. I'm missing forever. So it's just a heartache that it will take time to heal. Brandy Melissa was a high school classmate and a close friend to Officer Montrell Jackson. We sat in English class, in math class, in science class, in social studies, in high school. And I want to thank everybody for being out here, for supporting his family and others, and to keep their families and their friends in the community in prayer. And Officer Matthew Gerald. He didn't know at the time, but his wife was about to have another child one he never got to meet. It was about a, a month, maybe a month and a half after that uh, we all found out that, you know, she was pregnant and, you know, what a gift from God that has been. Truly unreal. Gerald lived to the age of 41. Jackson was 32 and Garofola was 45. When I grew up, it was love and peace. Now everybody's shooting everybody for nothing, for nothing. They're killing people for nothing. Makes no sense. Somebody needs to look at their heart and look at their souls. Just taking it one day at a time and just that's all we can do. 
Just pray God give us strength to get through it. This is my room. Williams lives here with her two daughters and mother. Like I said, my girls lost everything. This is a total loss. Um, their beds, their clothes, their shoes, they lost everything. The tree came crashing down around 1230 Monday afternoon. This is my, um, my bathroom. I still have the limb in. The tree fell through. Williams' mother was home alone when the severe weather tore through. My mom, she was sitting, this is her chair, she was sitting right here. The Williams family is renting the home and were only able to salvage a couple things. It's soaking wet. The realtors put them up in a hotel and it's unclear how long that will be available. This is materialistic stuff. Um, it is hard because it's this big old house and now we're confined to four of us, two beds. We got maybe 10 bags of stuff. Emergency crews were out assessing the damage where more trees came down. The National Weather Service estimates winds were as high as 60 to 65 miles per hour. The Ponchatoula Volunteer Fire Chief says it's been a busy year for his department. We just uh, experienced two floods uh, this year, uh, just months apart, five months apart. The residents in this area has been put through quite a bit. And as for the Williams, they're hoping for the best and going to rely on each other to get by this Christmas. Well, we got to spend Christmas in a hotel. I'm like, yeah, baby, I'm sorry, but you know, that's all we have. If some miracle happened or somebody say, okay, we got a house, that'll be great, but I, it's just going to be hard. The fire chief says no injuries were reported. In Ponchatoula, Aubrey Killian, WDSU News. When greed feeds on grief, West Waco Police Chief Dwayne Munch says people wanting to do something good can end up getting scammed. We're just going to make sure that it doesn't happen by keeping a, a close watch on, on what's going on on the internet and on Facebook uh, so, so that this doesn't happen with Michael. The chief stepped in, verifying one GoFundMe account and directing donations there. The West Wego Police Benevolent Fund will control the account. It's going to go 100% to, to Michael Louvier's wife and his, his two beautiful children. Those children, a one-year-old son and four-year-old daughter who Munch says was daddy's little girl. When she arrived at the hospital Friday morning, breaking my heart to see her talk to one of my officers, uh, who she's very close to, Sergeant Laporte, who is uh, Michael Sergeant, she ran up and jumped on her and, and said, you should see my daddy's guard. But the final images we see of Louvier are grainy surveillance from just before sunrise Friday. Investigators say Simone Veal ran her car into this truck on Barataria at Ames in Marrero when she was desperately trying to escape from her ex-boyfriend, identified by police as Sylvester Holt. Louvier spots the crash, and even though he's on his way home from working the night shift, he stops and runs to the scene. Help arrives seconds later, but it's too late for Louvier and for Veal. The whole church prayed for him. Matthew Lewin goes to kindergarten just down the street from the West Wego PD. Officers have lunch there every Friday, but not that day. They have many questions, and he said, Mommy, can we stop there? And we stopped there, and we met his family and his mom. And his Marine family and fellow officers also taking a moment to remember. It hurts everyone that's in law enforcement or in, anyone that's related to law enforcement because we're all brothers and we all back up each other. 